Hi, I'm Pam Saul. I have Saul Bookkeeping, and I have been doing remote bookkeeping since 2011. That's when I started my business. What a balance sheet is showing you is how your business is with the, the assets and the liabilities that you have on that particular uh, snapshot. So what it will do is it will say, if you create a balance sheet today, it'll say, today... I'm going to go look at your bank account and see how much money you have in your bank account. And I'm going to bring that over on the balance sheet. I'm going to go look and see how many invoices you have today. And I'm going to bring that onto your balance sheet. Then I'm going to look at the liabilities you have that you, the loans that you have and what's left on that loan to pay. And I'm going to bring that on your balance sheet. So a balance sheet is taking information that are that is in other places in your business, whether it's a loan or an asset, and putting it into a report so you can look at it, all right? So the reason it's called a balance sheet is no matter what your assets are and your li liabilities are, it's going to uh, adjust it based on your equity. So the okay. equity so is kind of is the, the equity is that that is what balances. That's yeah. what balances. That's what balances the balance sheet. Got so it. There are a couple things when you look at a balance sheet, and and I can show you these. Um, for example, one of the things that you can can learn from a balance sheet is how much working capital you have. Mm -hmm. And working capital is just the assets you have less the liabilities tells you what you have left as far as working capital. So here's a balance sheet. This is not a real company. This is a, a sample company that QuickBooks has. So I'm just going to use it. So here are your assets. So here's the top half. This is showing you as of today, what you have in your checking account, what you have in your savings account, what invoices you have out. This one has some inventory. This one has some undeposited funds, which are um, monies that you've received from clients that you haven't deposited the bank yet. So okay. You, you, you... And as we go through this list, Pam, if I may, uh, you know, I want to talk about like, what's a healthy, <laughs> that yeah. may be the right word, but healthy yeah. balance sheet. So if you were reading this balance sheet as maybe a potential investor in the business, Mm -hmm. What, what, I don't want to say red flags. Again, this is a fictitious company, so we're not right, right. on anybody in particular, but right. you know, how would you read this? Like, okay. how would you see this and say, mm, I, you know, I'd like to see more here or less here or that type of thing. Okay. So this is a balance sheet and this is a landscape company. So if I'm a banker, I'm looking at this, I'm going to go, wow, they really don't have a lot of cash. Here's your cash right here. Now, as a, this is a landscape company and this is the spring, they may have just made all of their purchases for their bulk mulch or for their whatever. So they, you know, so a balance sheet, you need to look at the company and, and what type of company it is for what it's doing. So right now for a landscape company, they probably don't have a lot of accounts receivable because they've just gone through the winter and they really don't have a lot of, of, uh, invoicing that they've got out for people. Um, they may be in a part of the, the country where there was no snow. So they didn't do it. They didn't have any snow plowing this year. So they don't have any invoices for snow plowing out. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the inventory asset, this is telling me they really don't have a lot in stock right now, but they do have some money that's come in. So I have a feeling that maybe they're just now starting to get their retainer or deposits for people. And that's just starting to come in. Um, they do have their own equipment. So here they've got a truck that's worth $13,000. So what I'm going to look at is when I go to the bottom, here's that truck worth $13,000. Is there a loan? Mm. So, you know, here we have a notes payable that's $25,000. They may have purchased that truck and then created, um, or maybe they purchased a trailer or they made some sort of upgrade on that truck so they could use it for landscaping. And that's why they got a $25,000 note. Now it could be that they only have $4,000 left on that note because it's right here and it's only 4,000, but that's where you could then, um, in this case, we can look at it right now and we can go click on that loan payable and see what that loan is for. 
And this is a loan payable. If I click on it, it is for uh, opening balance. So the sample doesn't show me the information. But that's what you could do. You could go back and say, okay, either they have 4,000 that's on this truck. So that truck has 4,000 of a lien applied against it. So it has, you know, the 9,000 or so dollars. Or we could say they they purchased it with this $25,000 note and they, they did some upgrades to it. And now that truck is what they're going to use. So right. if you're looking at this, what we're looking at right now, one of the things that you want to do is, um, is say what your working capital would be. So if I were to look to try to figure out what the working capital available to this company would be, it would be that current assets less the current liabilities. So right now their current assets are right here. That's the checking, their savings, the accounts receivable, anything that they could really turn into cash quickly, that would be their, their current asset. They have a truck, but right now we don't know, there may be a lien on that truck because you know we've seen the note payable or it may not be a, as much value. So we're only gonna look at the top half and then we're gonna take the current assets minus the current liabilities. Now your current liabilities are your accounts payable. Now these are bills that you, accounts payable or bills that you owe to a vendor, your credit card balance and any of your other liabilities. Now these would be most likely sales tax, if you collect sales tax as a business, um, that's a liability that you have to pay. Um, and then you wouldn't include your long term because your long term that's not due this year. Those are that's the portion that's due in the future. So we only want to look for working capital for this year. One of the other good things that I would look if I was looking at this balance sheet, they only have $157 on their MasterCard, which tells me that they're keeping up with their credit cards. They're not heavily indebted to a credit card. And if you have a lot of money on a credit card, your interest rate is probably ridiculous, like 28%, 29%. That's what the credit cards are. So this would be a red flag. If I saw $10,000, $15,000, or if I saw six credit cards, let's say they have six or seven credit cards, that would be a red flag because I would say, they're basically floating money through credit cards instead of being able to pay their bills. Got it. Okay. So working capital would be your asset minus your liability, your current liabilities. And what that tells you is how much um, you have in cash that you can use to pay for your rent, to pay your salaries, to pay your loans, anything that's due this year. So that, that's the ratio that you want to know when you're looking at a balance sheet, if you want to know if you're in trouble or not, if you're looking at the at the current assets less the current liabilities and it's a negative number, then you have a cash flow problem. Got it. All right. Okay. And it, can I pause on this real quick, Pam? Mm -hmm. There's something called a cash flow statement mm -hmm. as well. Right. So how does that is that just a, like a subset of what you're talking about in regards to this flow. Yes. Yeah, so your cash flow in its its basic form is saying how much money you have available to use, how much cash you have available to use to pay out any expenses you have on the business. So if we were looking at this accounts, um, looking at this balance sheet and the accounts payable was like $24,000. I would look and say, why is that so high mm -hmm. if they only have in their bank account $1,000? Yeah. Um, one of the things that you would look at and you you would question is, are they not getting in, are they invoicing and they're not being paid on time? Got it. Uh, one of the things that I find with businesses is if you are making your invoices do it 30 days. And then the clients are not paying you at 30 days. They're not paying you for 45 or 60 days. Then you have a problem. Yeah. What I recommend mostly is if you are providing a service or a product, um, 
you either get prepaid, you get a deposit, or you bill it 15 days. So if you bill it 15 days, then if they are a little late paying, you're only at 30 days, whereas opposed to if you're billing at 30 days, you get it 45 days to 60 days. Yeah. So one of the recommendations I make is if you're invoicing after you have provided, you should make your invoice either due upon receipt or net 15 days at the most, because you've already provided that that service. So you want to get paid. Or even even better, charge up front. <laughs> right. And that's why I said you either get a retainer or a deposit. <laughs> yeah. When you're when you're doing that work. And then if you do get a retainer deposit, that gets put on your balance sheet. You do not want to consider that revenue until you create that um, work. If, if something were to happen and you couldn't provide that work, it would have to go back. So on your balance sheet, you would create a liability account called retainer or deposits, and it would sit there so that you don't use that money. It doesn't go onto your profit loss as revenue because you haven't earned that money yet. Yeah. So that's, yes. if you do a retainer or a deposit, it needs to go on your balance sheet until you actually earn that revenue. And then when you create your invoice, you will go ahead and use whatever um, you use. So like this landscape company, let's say they got a deposit for the mulch. Then when they created the invoice for the mulch, they would say the total price of the mulch. And then the next line would be the deposit and they would minus that deposit out. So they only owe however much is between the difference between the two. And then that clears out the retainer. Makes sense. Great. Okay. So as you scroll to the bottom of this uh, sample balance sheet um, and we look at things like retained earnings, mm -hmm. um, which don't seem too hot for this right. poor little landscaping company. <laughs> right, right. I'd say this is probably a brand new company is what they're showing. Okay. Because look, your net income is only fifteen fifty one. Yeah. So I would say this is probably what they're showing us as a brand new company. Great. Okay. Makes sense. So Again, new company, <laughs> mm -hmm. not not something that you know. As a banker or an investor, you know, I would <laughs> would would blow smoke up my skirt, right? <laughs> right. Now, now, you know, the balance sheet isn't the only thing you're going to look at. It, obviously, this one's not very strong. But let's say they've got a, a business plan put together, and they are they've got the ability to have a contract with a utility company and they're going to do the utility company's uh, landscape work on all the lines in a certain county. So if they're contracting to do that, this is going to, their, their revenue is going to increase dramatically, but again, so will their expenses because they're going to have more payroll, they're going to have more um, liability as far as their um, equipment and that kind of thing. So it would, you know, if they can say, hey, look, my balance sheet's not real strong right now, but this is my plan. Here's my my three-year plan. I've got, I'm contracting with the utility company to do the landscape work along their lines. You're good to go, you know? So one of the things that I like to tell people is keeping your balance sheet up to date is extremely important. And what I find a lot is that the CPA will keep the balance sheet information, but they won't give it to the to the client for their books to be right. Yeah. You need your balance sheet right so that when you do go to the bank and you say, look, I want to, I want to open a line of credit. And here's my balance sheet, here's my profit and loss. I want a line of credit. I've got something coming up and I may need cash quickly. So I want to do a line of credit. You need to have the information in your balance sheet. And having it at your CPA's office for them to do the taxes at the end of the year does you no good. Makes sense. So, so yeah. a lot of times I recommend get the information from your CPA so that you can get your, your balance sheet correct. Yeah. I just ran into that recently where my CPA had a certain number on retained earnings and my bookkeeper had a very different number on retained earnings. So I'm looking at my balance sheet and I'm like, this doesn't look very good, but the, <laughs> yeah. the, the information wasn't flowing back and forth between the two. Right, right. So, yeah, it's it's 
it's important to have, it's a tool to use. It's something that you can look at um, and, and be able to make decisions. You know, if I was looking at this and, and as a business owner, I could say, look, my, my credit card is really low right now, but I need to get a piece of equipment that I can use. I need to buy three blowers so that I can go work on this utility line. I'm going to put it on the credit card because I don't have a lot of cash. But if I get a retainer from the uh, utility company for the start of the contract, then I can pay off the credit card in time and I won't have late fees and interest. Yeah, absolutely. So that's where you can use your balance sheet to see what your information is and be able to make to sit business decisions instead of making them, you know, oh my God, what am I going to do? You can say, here's my plan. I'm going to put it on the credit card, but I'm going to get a retainer from the utility company, which will then pay for that. And, I, and the credit card, I can then use the credit card, their money free 30 days. Yes. It doesn't cost me anything. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. All right. Super, super helpful, Pam. Um, one last question on this before I have you close out of uh, screen share is, what what else would you want to see on this balance sheet to make it healthy, <laughs> right? Obviously more cash in the bank account. Right, right. What else? What else would you want to see to say this is a really strong company? So a, a strong company is going to have the, your current assets is going to be strong, but it's also going to have assets that it has built into the company. So for, for fixed assets of a landscape company, 13,000 is probably a single truck. So if you have fixed assets that are stronger, whether it's um, land or a building, or um, let's say you're a real estate company and you've purchased a townhome and you're going to use it for a and b uh, So if you have that on your balance sheet, that's strong because that's, that's an asset that's going to appreciate in value over time. Okay, so those are some of the things that you're going to look at on a balance sheet. You know, if they've got if they've got a strong AR, if you're looking at their AR and you run a report and their AR is uh, one to 60 days, that's stronger than an AR where everything is in 90 days. If it's in 90 days, there's a problem. Something's wrong. They're, they're not problem. They're, collecting. Yeah, yeah. If, if all of their AR is in 90 days. Plus, that means one, either they're never going to see that money. So that's not a true figure on their balance sheet, or they're not, or they basically train their clients not to pay them. So, you know, that's one of the things that you want to look at on a balance sheet. Yep, makes sense. Um, for folks, uh, a lot of the folks in the Hera Hub community are uh, consultants. They're, they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they don't have fixed assets um, like right. yourself. You probably don't have a lot of fixed assets in your business or right. marketing, digital marketing, you know, agency. You don't have a lot of assets. Yep. Are there other ways to outside of just straight up cash to, to show a strong balance sheet? So, so, right. So that would be your accounts receivable. Okay. If you've got a strong accounts receivable, um, other current assets may be, um, what would I have? You said you said good goodwill earlier in the conversation. Like, how does that go on the balance sheet? Right. So you would if you're let let's say you have three or four companies that you're a bakery and you've got three or four offices um, bakeries in the city. So your goodwill would be your name and the value of your business in that community. So if you were thinking about selling or had um, the ability to trademark or franchise, let's say someone wanted to, to open another uh, bakery and, and run it for you and say, hey, you know, I'll pay you X amount of dollars, that would be the goodwill. Okay. And how, how do you come up? How do you come up with that number? Frankly, yeah, that's, there are actual companies that will do that for you based okay. on the industry. Okay. So, you know, for example, it, for me, I'm a bookkeeper. If I wanted to sell my business, I would probably go out and ask uh, someone who value, who does valuation of businesses for me 
And what he's going to look at is the number of clients that I have, the book value of each one of the clients, how much I make for each one of the clients per year, how many employees I support, how long I've been in business, what my profit is per year. All those things all get put into creating a value for the business. Yeah. Okay. And that would, do you typically see folks putting that on their balance sheet? Um, not, not for consultants, um, okay. but for large businesses, yes, they would put that on. Okay. But small Great. to medium sized businesses, probably not. Okay. Got it. Great. Okay. Right. Uh, if you will pull off screen share okay. and um, I'll just ask a couple more questions and then I'll, I'll set you free here. <laughs> Um, so let's see, I'm just scanning through. So some of the things I personally had some questions on, um, so accumulated depreciation, Mm -hmm. um, on my balance sheet is negative (laughs) $24,000. That that looks bad. <laughs> what right. does that mean? So when you purchase items, whether it's yeah. a car, truck, piece of equipment, computer, or whatever, it has a specific life value that is used for accounting. Um, uh, you know, it, people laugh. They say you take a car off the lot, it lose it depreciates by twenty percent or whatever. So there are schedules that are used for tax purposes that take and and take a piece of the value of that equipment off every year. Yeah. So, you know, let's say you have a $10,000 piece of equipment and the depreciation schedule is 10 years. So you take $1,000 every year as accumulated depreciation off that piece of equipment. That's not a true, you know, that's, I'm just using that for round yeah. numbers. Yeah. But there, there are ways that you can use that you can do, um, you can advance your depreciation so that it has um, a value in the first year and then lower values for the next years. Okay. So th- it's something that you can use on your tax return as a, as a benefit. Okay. So if it's negative, if That's you're- just, it's being applied against the value of your asset. Got it. So okay. Accumulated depreciation will never be more than the value of your assets. If you if you have equipment and you don't ever buy anything new, and that that equipment was fifteen thousand dollars, your accumulated depreciation at the end of that schedule will be negative fifteen thousand dollars. Makes sense. So that fixed asset will be zero at the end. And lots of folks took out EIDL loans yes. <laughs> during the pandemic. How does that, that that's, that's a liability, right? Yes, that's a liability. And that's a loan just like any other loan. And so you're going to track that loan in your long-term liabilities because most of them are 20 years. And, and then you can take a portion of it and put it into current liabilities. That's the amount that you're going to pay this year. Makes and sense. then on your profit and loss, you're going to track the interest expense. So if your, your payment is $1,000 and they say 900 goes to the principal, 100 goes to interest, you get 900 that goes on your balance sheet and 100 on your profit and loss. And that figure changes every single time because it's based on a percentage. So if it's 900 and 100, the next time it'd be 9, 10 and, you know, 90. And, and it just, it changes each time. So anytime you have a loan, um, you can't apply that whole amount to the, the loan liability because part of it is the interest of you getting that loan. And that's an expense to the business that doesn't go on the liability, but on the balance sheet. Well, Pam, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.